a, when you're developing a system, it doesn't just do anything. I mean, that is the, can't think of a less cliche word than organic process. You know, I know different ways of simulating something can afford different uh, opportunities for variability or for intervention or for breaking systems to do unexpected things. And so, I don't know, the most surprising behavior I find is when things break, which can be good, but is often bad. I feel like because you have to understand something in order to be able to control it. And so when you, when you have some sort of bizarre numerical error that creates a behavior where you don't understand it, but it is still intriguing and complex, that's really cool because you don't understand it. But at the same time, what's the next step because you don't understand it? And where do you go from there? So I guess usually a lot of the the process is somewhat removing or limiting the unexpected so that we can go about doing something that we intend. To an extent, I mean, sometimes our explorations are pretty random. Be like, try this and then try this and then you find something that finally works and you're just like, okay, this works, I'm gonna stop because I just need to settle down on this thing that I found that I know works. And there could be tons of other spaces in this system that make really cool behavior, but exploring it is really hard. And so once you find something that you can work with, you, you sort of wanna just hold on to that. And then sometimes parameters, but at the same time when, when you have seven parameters, let's say each perimeter has, you know, 10 different chunks that you're looking at. Going through all of those combinations is suddenly like 10 to the seventh things. And if you're working with a simulation that takes five minutes for every time it runs, you, uh, you run out of time very quickly, like time in the universe. <laughs> That's interesting is we can always return to a system and find new things to do with it where you know usually we won't just go to a system and then do the same thing we did before with slightly different parameters but we might have a different application and a different material for a different design purpose and we can use that as an opportunity to explore new areas of this growth or know how the system functions hmm. yeah I mean I'm I'm really intrigued more by sort of the the theoretical aspects and yeah I don't know I guess I don't necessarily think about the the beauty dimension as much but people talk I think there, there's definitely an attraction to sort of elegant systems but sometimes that attraction can get in the way of exploring messy things. Some things are just messy. I mean, biology is messy. So what Jessica was talking about before, there, you know, when we're creating code or creating mathematical theories, we like everything to be nice and tidy and it all fit together. You know, you don't want to have giant switch statements that you have this condition and this condition and this condition where everything does something different. You want everything to be nice and elegant and work in one system, but biological systems don't work that way. There are tons of systems on top of systems that are all redundant, that all work in different ways. And so an over fascination or obsession with elegance can, can sort of steer you away from the, the messiness of reality. You know, 
things like processing or open frameworks, it makes perfect sense to share. And sort of the idea of open source models is that by sharing, things get better. And a community can thrive and grow up around these tools and make them better for everyone by everyone being able to access them. But at the same time, when you're making, you know, an artwork or a product, it's not necessarily meant to be improved upon, or that's not like the goal. It wouldn't necessarily be a better, or it's not necessarily our intention for it to be a better artwork by being used by a community. It sort of doesn't, sort of, I like the idea of sharing as an educational experience. And I feel like you can share code without it being, you know, open source. So a lot of, well, some of our projects recently, just because our general confusion about the whole issue is our source is available and can be seen, it's just not actually open source. So it's not, it's the, the license says all rights reserved. So you can look at it, just people know what is, you know, fair and what is ethical and you would like that you could just depend on that being the case and people would not, you know, do things in a, a malicious or disingenuous manner. I sort of both like to just live pretending that that is the case and also just think I'm just going to keep making work and if people decide to rip me off, one, anybody I care about will, will know about it, and two, I'll be moving on to doing, you know, new things that, you know, I'm just generally really interested in always trying to create in new ways, whether those are looking at new algorithms or looking at new forms of fabrication, or even, you know, from exploring new technology like 3D printing or figuring out what it's like to get something manufactured in China or, you know, trying to develop our own sort of in-house methods of producing things, whether it's jigsaw puzzles or playing around with casting and forming using digital fabrication techniques is using reaction, multiple layers of reaction diffusion on a sphere and using that to extrude or expand the surface and create this sort of seed-like or coral-like form. And then the level of when you first say, how am I going to simulate this thing? It starts to force you to make choices about what you can and can't do. I feel like because our work is so focused on trying to sort of uh, impose a kind of intentionality on these systems and use them to design sort of physical objects that have to behave in certain ways or have certain effects through space, this sort of breaking uh, down of systems basically just due to errors is usually intriguing but not necessarily useful because you have to understand something in order to be able to control it. Radical theories, we like everything to be nice and tidy and it all fit together. You know, you don't want to have giant switch statements that you have this condition and this condition and this condition where everything does something different. You want everything to be nice and elegant and work in one system, but biological systems don't work that way. There are tons of systems on top of systems that are all redundant, that all work in different ways. And so an over fascination or obsession with elegance can, can sort of steer you away from the, the messiness of reality.